Good afternoon. My name is Tom King. I'm president and CEO of the Indiana State Museum and Historic Sites. So, <laughs> I promise you that's not my staff doing that. So, <laughs> Welcome to the groundbreaking for the Levi Coffin House Interpretive Center. We're so pleased that you could join us today. This is both an inspirational uh, place and it's an inspirational project. And we hope uh, you're as excited about it as we are. Uh, we're looking forward to sharing uh, the cultural, historical, and economic impact of this interpretive center with you. And we can't wait uh, to get our shovels into the uh, dirt and make this great vision finally a reality. We also want uh, you to know why we think these improvements are critical, not only to the historic site, but to Fountain City and to the Hoosier State and really to the nation. Uh, to assist me in explaining some of this, it's my pleasure to introduce to you the chair of the Soul Seeking Safety Campaign. Uh, uh, he's an accomplished business leader and a skilled political strategist from the other party, I might add, which it, it makes it a uh, very much of a bipartisan effort. Robin Winston has devoted his career to providing timely and, sta and savvy strategic finance and management marketing and political advice to the people from whom he has worked. In 1999, he made history when he became the first African American to chair a major political party in Indiana. Mr. Winston has done an enormous amount of work for our community and also for the Indiana State Museum and Historic Sites. Uh, his work on this campaign has been invaluable, and we're so grateful for Mr. Winston's involvement. Robin. Good afternoon. Oh, come on. It's, it's a great day. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Great, great. Rarely do we have the chance to be involved in a project when they ask you, Governor, to be involved in something where so many things are done in advance for you. But you all, in Fountain City and in Wayne County, in East Central Indiana and in our state, did a lot to bring this project to fruition. You did it by bake sales, you did it by keeping this building protected since 1967 as a state historical site. The McGuire sisters have gone on tours on the weekends. They've taken people, kids, a dog, a cat, and a bird, anybody that they want to through the building to see this wonderful site. They have done it the right way. And, it's, and it's, they ought to be commended. But, you know, I was asked to be capital campaign chair by, by uh, the CEO and the president of the museum, Tom King. But whenever I got on board, a lot of things were done. And uh, Asia May, who's vice president of marketing, Tina Sullivan, who's a vice, senior vice president for external relations, all did a tremendous job, along with Anna Liza Lewis, to bring this project to fruition. You had a lot of local support, people like Mary Walker from your tourism group, the Quigg family, and, and I'm not going to name the rest because I don't want to be chairman of the Hurt Feelings Club. The fact of the matter is that you all know you did a great job. Please give yourselves a round of applause. Thank you. Governor, we stand here today on, on what is literally hallowed ground. Um, over 150 years ago, Levi and Catherine Coffin lived up to a lot of the religious underpinnings that we all studied in our first books of the Bible. And they learned that you accept a stranger to your doorstep whenever they knock and ask for help. And on many a cold night, people came along this very route, this very house, this very location, and asked for help. They didn't have to do it. They could have easily turned their back and ignored the request for help. They could have, in the words of the young rock and rollers that worked for me, said it got caught in their spam filter and never dealt with it. But they didn't do that. And neither did the slaves who made their way north. They could have been complacent, staying where they were, but they didn't do that either. They took the ultimate challenge, the ultimate survivor, and made their way north, guided by two basic principles. A north star that hung in the sky as a constant reminder to keep going north. And an unbridled spirit and passion to be free. To be free. 
You know, so often we use the word freedom in so many different descriptions and, and definitions, but in those days, freedom meant surviving. It meant making your way north. And they did it here on this spot, which 100, over 150 years later, we're here to commemorate. Oftentimes, I'm reminded of the words of Alex Haley, the author of Roots, who said that history, history is written by the winners. You all have made history today because you have made winners of the legacy by those slaves and by Levi and Catherine Coffin. And this day will be a day that you'll never forget. And this day, Governor, as you travel around the country touting job creation and touting educational improvements, also tout that on this day in this small town, we demonstrated that Indiana is a model for racial equality. Thank you all very much for being with us today. Thank you, Robin, for your comments, uh, most uh, poignant and important. And thank you all for coming today. Um, you know, the last time there was a groundbreaking at this site, it was 175 years ago, when Levi and Catherine Coffin undertook to build the house that's right across the street here. Uh, to put it all in perspective, the Civil War had not yet begun. Slavery was still legal in the South. Uh, in the midst of these circumstances, Levi and Catherine Kaufman uh, built their house on this spot and forever changed the Indiana landscape in an enormous way. More than just a home, this building was the lifeline for thousands of freedom seekers who were determined to flee slavery and find freedom in Canada. The Coffins, who were devout Quakers, are estimated to have helped over 3,000 freedom seekers in Fountain City and then uh, later in Cincinnati. They d did this selflessly, tirelessly, and without regard for any danger to themselves. They offered food and shelter, clothing, and me medical care. Their home, this home across the street, became known as the Grand Central Station of the Underground Railroad. We are incredibly proud to call the Levi Coffin House one of Indiana's state historic sites. It's a true gem in our state's history. A shining ex example that reflects the character and impact of Hoosiers, not only on Indiana, but on the entire nation. For years, this site has, run, uh, has been run and maintained by a group of dedicated volunteers. Chief among them are Janice McGuire and Sandra Jackson, finally known within the State Museum and Historic Site Circles as the Coffin Sisters. These two remarkable women started volunteering here in the late 70s when the house was originally restored and open to the public. They have been uh, integral to the success of the Coffin House from the beginning. As part of the expansion of this site, excuse me here, as a part of the expansion of this site, we'll be building a library and through its, uh, in, though it's impossible to fully express our thanks to all that Janice and Sandra have done, we'll be honoring their incredible efforts by naming that library the Janice McGuire and Sandra Jackson Freedom Seekers <laughs> Library. I think the response speaks volumes. Uh, uh, in an average of nine hours a week and four months a year, this tiny group of volunteers serves 6,000 people annually. They've led as many school groups and tours as possible through the house, sharing the coffin story. However, they've been severely limited in their efforts by the lack of accessibility, the lack of bathrooms for visitors, and the absence of any sort of interpretive exhibit about the history that happened here. Nothing about the story is anything short of amazing. Yet we have lacked the ability to share that story on the scale that it deserves. Today, all that changes. With this groundbreaking, uh, we take the first physical step 
in making the new Levi Coffin Interpretive Center a reality. When it's completed, the Levi Coffin State Historic Site will be open year-round for the first time. This will allow this site to serve many more people every year, two or three times the number of visitors annually. There will be more accessibility. There will be a gift shop, the orientation theater, uh, with a video about the coffins and an, a moving and enlightening exhibition about the coffins work called Soul Seeking Safety, focusing on the voices and perspectives of the freedom seekers and we'll finally have restrooms for the thousands of young people. <laughs> we are so grateful to everyone whose time and support has allowed us to embark on this mission to bring the coffin story to even more people. Of course, none of this would have happened uh, without the efforts of you all. We're grateful to the U.S. Department of Transportation the National Endowment for the Humanities, Lilly Endowment, the State of Indiana, Levi Coffin House Association, Wayne County Tourism uh, Convention and Visitor Center, and I saw Mary Walker here just earlier today, and she's been a supporter of this right from the very beginning, has been so supportive. The Quigg family, Pat and Paul Lingle, and the National Park Service, uh, and, Day, uh, and Dan, uh, Deandra Johnson from the National Park Service is here today with us, and uh, they were one of the major first providers. So we appreciate the involvement of all those people, and I hope you appreciate the bi both bipartisan and private-public uh, partnership that went together in this. There are private sector uh, operations that have put money into this. There are individuals who have put money into this, as well as government, and, and that's good things happen when that, that also happens. Uh, we'd also like to thank Robin Winston, who's given uh, so much inspiration to this and has been a tiger at, at uh, making sure we keep advancing this project and bringing it forward. Uh, Robin has been a remarkable chairman for this effort, and we appreciate his tireless work uh, on our behalf. Also, uh, I would like to call your attention that things happen uh, as a result of some of these things that are going on, and we're, we're not through with this project. We've raised about $2.7 million, and uh, we would like to hit the $3.2 million mark uh, in order to do this right. Don't worry, we've got all the money to build the building, Governor. So, um, but, but the exhibitions and uh, the things that go in it are extremely important. So uh, we're excited about today's groundbreaking, in it, but our work here is not finished. We're still actively seeking additional support for the project so that we can tell this story and provide an experience that adds depth, empathy, and pride in what took place here. There are donation materials and envelopes on the tables in the back of the tent, uh, and we encourage you to take them with you today. We're grateful to the enorm uh, generous people who have helped us already, and we feel confident that the public will answer the call uh, for this very worth worthy cause. In fact, just earlier today, I was handed a note, which I dropped on the way up here but recovered, uh, about three citizens of uh, Fountain City who each have pledged $500 a year for three years and are, uh, they want to challenge their federal citizens uh, to come forward in a similar way uh, to support this structure. The people who uh, step forward are Larry Stiegel, Mary, Giff Mary Giffey, and Sean Bing uh, Bingworth, Dingworth, I'm sorry, uh, who have issued that challenge to their fellow citizens. So we're we're very pleased uh, with that. We're so grateful that all of you have joined. Thank you. We're so grateful that all of you have joined with us, not only in our overall efforts, but also for today's groundbreaking. I'd particularly like to thank a couple state representatives, uh, Richard Hamm and Tim Saunders, who uh, have come to be with us here today. Uh, I think Sally Hutton, the mayor of Richmond, is here. I know there's a number of people from Wayne County uh, commissioners uh, that are with us and representatives uh, from uh, different political offices around the state, and we do appreciate you being with us here today. Um, and now I'd like to introduce someone who shares our passion for these great stories of the Hoosier State. He's not only leading Indiana into a bright future, but he has a uh, deep respect for its past, so much so, in fact, that he majored 
in history at Hanover College before going to receive a, a law degree from Indiana University and pursuing a career in public service. I also, uh, in the history of this place, when things weren't going as well as they are today as far as raising money, when he was a congressman, he wrote a letter of endorsement for this particular project. We're grateful for his support for the project, and we're thrilled that he's able to be a part of today's celebration. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Governor Mike Prent, Pence. Thank you. What a great day. What a great day to be in, in Fountain City and to be in Wayne County. Thank you all for coming out. And uh, Tom King, uh, as we approach uh, the advent of our third century, as we prepare to celebrate uh, our bicentennial in just a few uh, short years, uh, I, I am just uh, so grateful uh, for your leadership at the Indiana State Museum and historic sites Today is one more great example of how Indiana is going to celebrate 200 years of our storied history. Tom, thanks for your leadership. Uh, and to uh, Robin Winston, uh, the chair of this effort, the Soul Seeking Safety Campaign, thank you. Uh, uh, thank you for your energetic leadership. Uh, and, and thank you for those extraordinarily eloquent words uh, this morning. Um, uh, we are uh, deeply moved by your passion uh, and by your selfless efforts in preserving uh, this uh, element of Indiana history, uh, this bright spot in a very uh, dark time in our nation's history. Uh, generations of Hoosiers will be in your debt and in the debt of all of those uh, that brought us uh, to this day today. Thank you, Robin. Thank you for all you've done. Uh, to all of uh, the donors uh, to uh, the Levi Coffin Interpretive Center, thank you. Thank you for being here. Uh, to the leadership in the local community, I know Mayor Hutton is here. It's my friend uh, and uh, Larry Stiegel, the president of the Fountain City uh, Town Council. Uh, to members of the Indiana General Assembly, I bring you greetings. I, uh, uh, I, 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 I have to be honest with you. It is, uh, it's very humbling for me to think uh, about the opportunity we have to break ground on this uh, extraordinary uh, Levi Coffin State Historic Site Interpretive Center here in Fountain City. But I'm especially humbled to be able to do it uh, in the presence of the Coffin Sisters <laughs> who have kept this place alive for thousands of visitors. I can't, they came up to me before the event started and they said, no, we're the one we actually have given. I just grabbed them. I said, I've been dying to meet you. Thank you. Thank you for your labor of love here. And, and uh, the, the commemoration that was announced today is altogether fitting. And, and uh, your legacy will, will endure here for many years. So thank you so very much for the way uh, you've cherished uh, the extraordinary history of Levi and Catherine Coffin, uh, who uh, more than 175 years ago uh, demonstrated that, uh, that Fountain City uh, was a fountain of freedom. Uh, in, a, in a difficult time in America. So thank you again very much. Uh, we speak now today of Levi and Catherine Coffin, uh, hiding freedom seekers in their home, collecting money for extra food, Catherine's work organizing sewing circles to make clothing for those who showed up at their doorstep. The Coffins embraced a very simple idea at the very core of their faith, to do unto others as you would have them do unto you, uh, to not mistreat that alien in your midst. Uh, and they extended arms of kindness and friendship and hospitality that will now be remembered for generations to come. And it is essential that their stories are told, uh, that are remembered and are cherished. Uh, and I want, to thank, uh, I want to thank the museum for helping to make that happen in an even more powerful way through this interpretive center. And I'm, I'm especially excited that it's going to be completed <laughs> in time for our bicentennial of 2016 and we'll be back for that ribbon cutting. You know, the truth of the matter is you don't have to go too far to hear stories of uh, heroes here in Wayne County. Uh, Eileen Baker Wall is the great-great-granddaughter of uh, freedom seeker William Bush. Rather than continuing north, William Bush actually settled in Fountain City, helped the coffins transport 
and house freedom seekers. Today, three generations later, his great-great-granddaughter, Eileen, is a recently retired teacher and assistant principal from Richmond, now serves as a volunteer and docent at the Levi Coffin House. Uh, recently, Eileen was able to hold for the first time her great-great-grandfather's wooden shoes on display at the Levi Coffin House. And uh, Eileen, are you here? I have to believe. Let's give Eileen a round of applause. She's actually on the Orient Express. She's actually on the Orient Express. <laughs> I would have lost that one. Her son is here. How about a big round of applause for this great family? Thank you. Great to have you here. Give mom our warmest regards and tell her I mentioned her. <laughs> Spirit of Levi and Catherine Coffey also lives, lives on through many other members of the community. We mentioned our Coffin Sisters, it's worth mentioning again, led an all-volunteer effort at the Levi Coffin House, raised funds, partnered with the state of Indiana, provided thousands of tours to visitors from literally all over the world, nationally recognized experts in Levi Coffin and the Underground Railroad, and uh, we, uh, we are, will always be in their debt. And the stories of this kind of love and passion and celebration of this rich history highlight the importance and, and potential, I believe, of the Levi Coffin House State Historical Site and, and our future interpretive center, which has been described as the linchpin for the future of economic development in Fountain City, and I believe it will be. Uh, I believe that uh, that history, which has already been cherished here, has contributed mightily to drawing people into this, this rich and meaningful chapter of Indiana's history, and this interpretive center uh, will increase that uh, dramatically uh, as more Americans come uh, to cherish the history and the meaning uh, of this place. Uh, support for the new Interpretive Center, as you've already heard, comes from a variety of sources, national grants, community grant dollars, individual donors, and state monies, uh, and uh, all of it uh, under the strong stewardship and leadership of the Soul Seeking Safety Campaign uh, and Robin uh, Winston. It's a multi-million dollar investment, not just in the future of Wayne County, uh, but it's a, it's a multi-million dollar investment in cherishing our past. And Tom King will tell you, you know, I was a history major at Hanover College. which I, got me a job at Hanover College right after I graduated. <laughs> but I, I studied history because I love history. I, I, I love that old proverb that says, remember, uh, remember the, the ditch from which you were dug, the quarry from which you were hewn. And for us to understand where we can go in the future, we have to understand who we are in the past. And I, I just commend each and every person here uh, for demonstrating that, that understanding and that wisdom in the investments and the collaboration that you all have brought together today. Came into high relief for me last uh, year. You know, we have this uh, thing at the State House that called Statehood Day. School children from all over the state uh, come around to learn about our state's history. Uh, I love talking to fourth graders because they walk up to me and say, I just got done studying you. But this year, we always, we always have an essay contest, and last year, the first place winner was a young man who wrote, uh, interestingly enough, about Levi Coffin. And I, I pulled out a copy of his essay. I thought you all might appreciate it particularly. Little Andrew wrote, a hero to me is a person that looks after others. Levi Coffin was a hero to Indiana, he wrote. He helped our state by letting African-American slaves live in his house. I like Levi because he put others first. I will always remember him as a hero, and I hope I can see his house someday. Can we make plans? We'll get Andrew down here uh, for the ribbon cutting at the Interpretive Center, because this is all about Andrew, isn't it? This is really all about Andrew. As Robin Winston said, it's really all about, it's all about making sure that this precious history uh, that demonstrated the very heart and the compassion of the people of Indiana uh, is, is conveyed to Andrew and to future generations of Hoosiers and every American. So let me just say as your governor, thank you. Uh, thank you for your leadership. Thank you for your passion. Thank you for your generosity that's brought us to this groundbreaking today. Uh, and, uh, and we shall henceforth and forever, because of all of your efforts, be able in this interpretive center to celebrate that in some of the most difficult days in the life of our nation, 
uh, there was a man and a woman of faith in Fountain City who stood for the principle that they would do anything for freedom. Thank you all very much. God bless you. May God ever bless those who pass through these halls. Governor, thank you. Your presence here puts an exclamation mark on the importance of, of this hallowed ground, as, as uh, Robin referred to it, uh, and the importance of that. So thank you for being here. Let's have another round of applause for the governor, because you've got a business schedule. Now it's my pleasure to introduce a local uh, trio of local talent who will perform the American folk song, Follow the Drinking Gourd. Let's welcome them uh, and their performance. And I don't know where they are. <laughs> They're right there. Okay, good. Thank you. When the sun goes down and the nighttime falls, follow the drinking gourd. When the stars come out and the first quail calls, follow the drinking gourd. Follow the drinking gourd. Follow the drinking gourd. Well, the old man's a waiting for to carry you to freedom. Follow the drinking gourd. Follow the drinking gourd. Well, the banks Ooh. of the river make a mighty good road. Follow the drinking gourd. And the burden Ooh. I carry is a hand. Follow the drinking gourd. Follow the drinking gourd. Follow the drinking gourd. Well, the old man's a waiting for to carry you to freedom. Follow the drinking gourd. Follow the drinking gourd. drinking gourd. Speak differently to the land of the free. Follow the drinking gourd. Follow the drinking gourd. Follow the drinking gourd. Well, the old man's a waiting for to carry you to freedom. Follow the drinking gourd. Follow the drinking gourd. Thank you. Now I'm told that one of you is the vice chairman of the uh, Friends Group here. Yeah, thank you very much. Um, before we get to the actual breaking of ground here, I have a few housekeeping items to share with you. First of all, the groundbreaking will occur as soon as I'm finished. <laughs> so thank you for your patience. The wait's almost over. Uh, afterward, we invite you to join us for refreshments and hot apple cider. Uh, at the back of the tent. The Levi Coffin House will also be open for tours uh, after the ceremony, if any of you would like to take advantage of that opportunity. Uh, please also remember to take one of the commemorative posters with you as a small token of our appreciation for your time and support. In conclusion, and this isn't a, a conclusion, a groundbreaking by definition is a beginning. Uh, thanks to your support and everyone's hard work, we're now able to start making the vision of a more comprehensive interpretive 
uh, center of this remarkable historic site of reality. And that's so very, very exciting to all of us. And Governor, it will be done in 2016. <laughs> We look forward to the progress and developments in the months ahead, and we eagerly await the time when we can invite all of you back here to celebrate the grand opening of the Levi Coffin House Interpretive Center, the soul-seeking safety exhibition, and much, much more. This has been and will continue to be a group effort. We thank you for your time and your work and your generosity. Ladies and gentlemen, let's start digging. We're, we're gonna... Okay, everybody, eyes forward. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you. 